You know, I think that's probably the uh, most difficult shift for churches because I think we put a lot of our time and resources and energy mm-hmm. into what the church is doing, church activities and um, uh, the congregation itself. And so it's hard to make that shift, mm-hmm. but there's a number of things I think that uh, we can begin to do. The first is to see that uh, really our mission that we're called to by Christ, by God, is um, to exist not just for ourselves, but to exist for um, the community, to be a blessing to others and to be a blessing to the community. And one of the ways that we can do that is to really see ourselves as a missionary, a missionary to our communities, because we get all excited when we take those trips abroad, and that's very important, and um, we spend a lot of time and money and energy, and we're so excited, and maybe some of us write uh, uh, support letters and other things, but oftentimes we neglect um, the idea or the fact that we're actually called to be missionaries right in the places that Christ has put us in, in the communities that we live in. And so one of the ways, I think, to begin to do that is to think that way. Like we commission missionaries from our churches at worship services and um, in other ways. So maybe one of the things we can do is start to commission uh, people in our churches to become missionaries to neighborhoods to become missionaries to specific um, uh, ministries like reaching out to the homeless or um, being there to help those um, who are in need somehow in our community or um, becoming a missionary or starting something in a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the shifts that we need to make, um, starting to think about our holistic kind of call from Christ, not just um, God so loved the church, that's not what the Bible tells us. Mm -hmm. It tells us that God so loved the world. And so um, God's heart really aches for the world and not just for the church. Mm -hmm. It's extremely difficult um, for a church that's been so focused on its own budget, on its own numbers to begin thinking about the needs um, outside the community. And so I think to see ourselves as missionaries, and one of the things that happened in the church that I served before taking this call is that um, we ended up becoming an official sponsor of a local elementary school. Hmm. And um, so that that began to, that started to get our people outside the church. So we started mentoring children. And so our members had a a one-on-one relationship with a child in that elementary school. Um, We started doing things with the teachers in that elementary school. Um, so people started talking about how their, their faith was growing as a result of um, reaching um, people, and especially children, in, in that school. So that's just one example of, of something a church could do and begin thinking about what are the needs. And that was one of the needs in our community. This was an at-risk elementary school that needed support. And um, it was one of the ways our, our people got outside the church and into the community in a very meaningful way. Um, One of the things that we did in one of the churches I served is we put some prayer boxes out in the community so that we could kind of understand where people are at and um, where their hearts were and uh, what were some of the things that, you know, God was speaking to them that we needed to hear about our community. That's one of the things um, Mm -hmm. that we did. Mm -hmm. The other thing is who do we lift up Mm -hmm. in our worship services? Do we lift up all of those people that gave tons of money, Mm -hmm. that did great things? Or are we lifting up the, the, the regular people, mm-hmm. the moms, mm-hmm. you know, um, the person that works um, in the uh, supermarket, just the regular mm-hmm. people? Are we giving them an avenue um, to share kind of how God is using them mm-hmm. in the lives of others? Are we lifting them up mm-hmm. just as much as we are lifting up um, other people? Mm-hmm. Even in that choice, we're actually um, changing the culture of our church. Mm-hmm. But it's important to understand that Um, discipleship, and and Ray often talks about this, discipleship is the key to everything that we do because we're called to make disciples. Mm -hmm. We're called um, to really, um, as a church, to develop um, disciples, to give people opportunities to develop spiritually, emotionally, relationally, to have opportunities to serve, to have Mm -hmm. opportunities um, to be in scripture, to have opportunities um, to be mentored. You know, one of the things I think that'll happen as we start making a shift from this program-centered church to people-centered church 
is that our measurements are going to be different. And some of those measurements ended up being, um, well, how many healthy marriages do we have as a result of um, families beginning um, to do things together in, in, in mission instead of separating families and um, having the, the dad come out one night, the mom come out another night, the kids come out on another night, but how we began to see families as needing um, attention as a family and doing things as a family. So how many marriages, how many families are more healthy? But how much of our time really is spent as a session or leadership mm -hmm. team um, praying together, mm -hmm. seeking God's will together, looking at the scripture together, mm -hmm. being challenged to grow as um, Christ's disciple mm -hmm. together? As you're praying together and as you're um, studying scripture together, and, and you have this awareness that you don't have to invent ministry, that God's already up to mm -hmm. something in the community that's powerful, and you're being called to uniquely join what God's doing in the community, then when the Holy Spirit begins to work and move, to be open to the Spirit moving. And just, just a real quick example, um, when, when our session was beginning to um, realized that we were really so inwardly focused that we had lost sight of the community and joining God and what God was doing in the community. We were praying about, okay, how can we best serve this community? How can we best get our people back out into this community? When one day, a woman in our community who lived probably about a eighth of a mile from the church came up to the church and she asked to see me and I was in the office so I spoke with her and she said um, did you know that there's gang activity in my neighborhood and I just live um, and just an eighth of a mile from the church um, just out your back door and I said you know I'd read about it in the newspaper but um, you know I, I hadn't seen any um, physical signs of it and she said well there are gang signs all over my community and I'm thinking to myself oh Lord have mercy you know what can we do about this what does she want? And then what she said was, I've been to three other churches in the community and they've all turned me down. And all I'm asking is for some people in your church to join me in a prayer walk in my neighborhood so that we can pray for these kids who are looking for meaning in life in very dangerous and violent ways so they can see another way. So, um, so I went to the session and I said, you know, we've been praying about how to serve this community. And this woman shows up and, um, and her name's Barbara and she wants us to do a prayer walk in her community. And so um, session said, yes, let's do it. We've never done prayer walks. We don't even know what a prayer walk is. Mm -hmm. So we started, started with her neighborhood and we started walking communities and um, praying and reading scripture and praying for people. And, um, and just praying that we'd be a part of what God was doing to mm -hmm. rescue and reconcile um, relationships and neighborhoods. And that was just a powerful way for us just to, you know, we'd been praying, as Dave was saying, in the session meeting about joining God. Mm -hmm. And then um, a woman shows up and, um, and we could have said no. Um, and oftentimes we do say no, but what does it look like to say yes, to have that discernment mm -hmm. that, yeah, this is God at work and this is what we're called to join mm -hmm. and, and we can do this. At a church that I was um, uh, in, um, uh, one evening, uh, somebody, we think they were a um, number of adolescents, uh, graffitied the church. And so we had an immediate, you know, <laughs> emergency meeting mm -hmm. because, you know, who can do that to the church? You know, they can't get away with that. And so a number of um, ideas came up. You know, what about if we hire uh, security guards? Mm. What about if we put cameras um, up? You know, what if we have uh, Dave sleep on the roof and wait for them to come the next day? <laughs> what, 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 are, what, what, what do we do as an institution? And then uh, uh, a woman spoke up and she said, you know, mm. I understand that that might be a response that um, we would like to do. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the uh, thing that we need to wrestle with is a deeper question of how are we re responding mm -hmm. to these kids who are actually reaching out to us mm -hmm. by doing this? Mm -hmm. What does it mean for us to be as Christ to mm -hmm. them, to be a church to mm -hmm. them? Do you see that? Mm -hmm. One is institutional. Yeah. 
Mm. How do you deal with the problem? Mm. The other is much more spiritual. What is mm. God up to? Mm -hmm. What is God doing? And how do we join mm -hmm. with God? And how do we respond to God in impacting a life? Mm -hmm. One of the things that happened in our community was we had a, a bunch of people who loved running. And so um, we also had some people who had a heart to feed people and to begin to do something about hunger in our community. So we ended up with a race against hunger and we called it the spring chicken run. And it ended up becoming a, a community family event where we had all kinds of booze out. We had games for children so people to come and run, raise money to eradicate hunger. And um, so we had all kinds of people on the property. We were able to be in relationship with people we had never been in relationship with because of this run. And then um, NASCAR was a big thing in our community. So we got a NASCAR out. And so the kids got to crawl in and out of that car. And so I still have really fond memories of um, the community um, joining us in a major um, experience of um, serving the community. And we had, a, we had an opportunity to, to get to know people we had never gotten to know um, had we not had that opportunity for people to gather on our property. So to dream about how you can join God and what God's already up to in your community, but dream about how God wants you to use um, your property to serve your community. Um, and, and it's stuff you're already good at. Mm -hmm. um, so dream about that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then, and then in the words of Nike, just, just do it. <laughs> you know, just go out and do. Right. Yeah. You know, as we close this time, I uh, want you to know that, you know, even though we've shared some of our stories, that, that, that you have a story to tell, that God is at work in the life of your church, that I am excited and hopeful, and I want, we want to hear those stories from you. And, um, you know, we started this section, I talked about my type 2 diabetes and how the church might have something like type 2 diabetes. But here's the, the promise and here's the hope for me that we're under care of the great physician himself, Jesus Christ. That we don't do this out of our own power, but out of what God is already doing in our lives and in the life of our church. So I'm very hopeful. And I'm excited to see what God will do in your church. Amen.